Hi, I'm Professor Mark Rabowski. The most important asset journals have is their reputation. That's why it's vitally important to behave ethically. Throughout the course, we will be discussing what it means to be a responsible journalist. But for now, I want to briefly touch on three major sins to avoid. Committing these offenses can cause you to get fired if you're a professional journalist. And in this course, committing any of these offenses may result in you receiving an F for an assignment or even flunking the entire course. So pay attention. Ignorance is not an acceptable defense. I'm not trying to frighten you either. Rather, you need to remember that the press has a lot of power and sometimes power can cause corruption. In this lesson, I'm going to address three trouble areas. Plagiarism, fabrication, and conflicts of interest. Keep listening because I'm going to discuss certain situations that you probably don't even realize are considered plagiarism, fabrication, or a conflict of interest. I'll also discuss some things students have done in the past that's gotten them in trouble, so you know to avoid them. First, plagiarism. Don't plagiarize. Plagiarism occurs when you attempt to pass off words or ideas of others as your own without giving them credit. Here's an example. You're researching someone for a profile story, and you discover that a press release has already been written about the person, so you borrow entire sentences without giving credit. Even if you slightly reword the sentences, it's still considered plagiarism unless you attribute the information to the source. And you will likely be caught. Remember, once online, your story will be as searchable via Google as the text you plagiarized from. Unfortunately, this uh, happened to uh, one of my previous students. Um, he had been struggling in the class and he submitted an article that uh, just seemed like something he didn't write. So I just copied and pasted a, a sentence from a story uh, into Google and voila, um, a press release popped up, uh, which of course, you know, he did not mention or give credit to in his story. And he essentially plagiarized the entire press release just changing a couple words here and there. So needless to say, he got an F for that story. Second, let's discuss fabrication. Don't fabricate information. Fabrication occurs when you make up, imagine, or exaggerate any facts, quotes, sources, or events for a story. Maybe you lost your notes for a story, so you try reconstructing them from memory that's potentially fabrication. Or maybe you need a ju juicy quote so you concoct a bogus news source with a likely sound. Drop the taxes, drop socialism. Okay, let's see, you're here with your two-year-old and you're already in debt. Why are you here today, sir? Because I hear a president say that he believed in what Lincoln stood for. Lincoln's primary thing was he believed that people had the right to liberty and they had the right... Sir, what does this have to do with taxes? What does this have to do with your taxes? Do you realize that you're eligible for a $400 credit? Let me finish my point. Lincoln... Lincoln believed that people had the right to share in the fruits of their own labor and that government should not take it. And we have clearly gotten to that point. Wait, uh, wait. Now, did I'm you know, that, you did you know that the state of Lincoln gets $50 billion out of these stimulus? That's $50 billion for this state, sir. Ma'am, 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 I, I, I... Sir. Can you stop this, sir? Hold on. Okay, well, Kira, we'll move on over ma here. Ma I think you get the general tenor of this. Uh, it's anti-government, anti-CNN, since this is highly promoted by the right-wing conservative network, Fox. 
And since I can't really hear much more, and I think uh, this is not really family viewing, toss it back to you, Kira. All right, and I know Susan Rosen's having a hard time hearing me, but wow, that is the prime example uh, of what we're following across the country there. Susan uh, pointed out everything uh, <laughs> plain and clear of what she's dealing with. An ethics case dealing with privacy and public figures. Hang on, what? For personal reasons, an ethics case on privacy of public officials. Oh! Public officials' right to privacy is limited. This could be shown in the case of Mark Whitfield, the Medina County Commissioner. For our media ethics project, we chose to analyze, for personal reasons, a case study dealing with invasion of privacy. On April 5, 1979, a gray sedan was pulled over by a deputy. The deputy was surprised to find out that it was Mark Whitfield, the Medina County Commissioner, because he was wearing a blonde wig, heavy makeup, and lipstick. Whitfield's car was stopped because it was the suspect of a burglary call received by the deputy. The commissioner was taken home to change by a top officer before the sheriff could arrive. Whitfield was later brought into the police station for questioning. In the end, there were no charges filed or arrests made. Whitfield's cross-dressing secret was, however, out to the police. A reporter found out about his problem and wanted to report it. The reporter agreed to give Whitfield the weekend to tell his family about the incident before the story would run in the Beacon Journal on Tuesday. On Monday, Whitfield resigned for personal reasons. Given the situation, the reporter did not consider Whitfield a public figure anymore and therefore chose not to publish the article. A few years later, Whitfield considered running for Congress. The ethical question is, should the reporters and editors have kept the story quiet in the first place? Using one of the social theory concepts, the public's right to know, need to know, and want to know, we decided that it was unethical for the reporter not to publish the initial story. The public's right to know refers to obtaining open legal records and information provided by the Freedom of Information Act. The public's need to know refers to information that in turn will aid the public in making informed decisions as responsible citizens. The public's want to know can be information that fulfills a person's curiosity to serve solely as a means of entertainment. In order to understand the implications of right to know in this case, we must understand the meaning of privacy. Hey, hey, hey.